Nobody yet, just us. We got it up and going there, Lindsay. Why don't we go ahead? Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Roger's going to be a few minutes late getting here, so he asked if I kind of get things started on their way. We'd like to welcome everybody here today uh, for this information meeting. We're going to uh, be broadcasting this on Zoom for those that uh, want it. They should have received the uh, Zoom address and they'd be able to log on and do that sort of thing. So this is a information meeting only. Uh, looks like Roger's here now, so we'll turn the time over. Go, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started. Like we just uh, announced that we got it on Zoom, and those that want to participate via Zoom, they can do so. Uh, this is an information meeting only, and so we've invited. Tom Cotter from the county to come and talk to us about uh, truth and taxation and, and how this is all going to, how all this is going to work and answer questions that the council might have. And, and without that, without further ado, Tom, I guess, unless there's any other comments from any of you. Well, I think we'd just like to ask our questions and get them answered. Right? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the purpose here is yeah. to, to turn the time over to Tom. And, but it's for the council to ask questions and uh, other, other than that, it's a it's an information meeting for the rest of the group. We do have an yeah. approval of agenda on there if you would do oh, that. Okay, uh, we do have an agenda, so I guess I'd entertain a motion to take a motion. We approve the agenda as written. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I guess that was that. Tom, um, we'll, all right, we want me over to you here up there. Matter. Whatever's I most comfortable for you, I think. <clears throat> I'd like to just ask the question <clears throat> to start. Or did you <clears throat> want to go through a presentation? Um, it might be better to go through the presentation and see if that will take care of some of your questions. Okay. Um, well, I think we've talked about this in the past. Um, well, the important part here in property taxes, so January 1st is the lien date. So that's the value. That is the Date that the assessor sets the value of the property, January 1st. Everything from there rolls forward from that time. Um, so this is it's important to remember that in Utah, property taxes are revenue driven. <laughs> so what that means is that it means that Tremont and City is entitled to the same money they got last year using the same properties that had last year at this year's value. So in this little scenario that we, I came up with, so I said, all right, so in Gotham City, in 2020, there were 100 parcels. The total taxable value for Gotham City was $100 million. They're going to say, we need $25,000, comes up the tax rate of 0 0.00025. That's the Gotham's tax rate for 2020. It gets them $25,000. Now we roll it forward one year. So Gotham is entitled to that same $25,000 that we got last year. It's only going to look at the 100 parcels that existed in 2020, but it's going to look at their 2021 value. So in 2021, there's now 110 parcels in Gotham. But for the certified tax rate, they're going to exclude out those 10 new parcels that's considered new growth. But what also happened, those 100 parcels, their value increased. They were reappraised. When you hear the term reappraisal, that's what it's talking about. It's the existing previous year's parcel at this year's value. So what happened is the parcels increased to 105 million. Gotham City is still entitled to 25,000. You take 25,000 divided by 105 million, gives you the tax rate of 0 0.0024. Now we go and times that by the new value for all of Gotham, the 110 million. So you get 26,400. Um, the problem with that is so all of this happens as if inflation doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, you're going to get $26,000, but 
But if your inflation, I put over on the side, you can see if the inflation was at 5%, you need 26, you're not coming ahead in any with the new growth. The new growth is going to cover your inflation pretty much. Because you'd assume that new growth is going to require services. They're going to require the fire department, sheriff, the police. I say sheriff. No, I mean the police for you guys. Um, the other services that a municipality provides, they don't come in at a zero cost. There is a cost for new growth. So with that in mind, we'll just keep rolling. Lindsay, could you make those a little larger? That's possible. Um, so this one is a lot of numbers. So this is the tax commission. This is what the values were for Tremont for the 2021 tax year. Um, really the big thing you want to drive home from this is that the tax commission checks these numbers. Uh, they go through it, make sure that everything's legit. So if you go forward to the next slide, if there are questions about values, we can go over to this one. I'll ask you later. So this is how it worked for 2021 when we came in and calculated the certified tax rate for Tree Mountain. We looked at the all of Tree Mountain as a whole. For 2021, there was $787 million of value in Tree Mountain. The BOE adjustment, that stands for Board of Equalization Adjustment, that is people who appeal their value based off an average of people that live within the Tree Mountain or commercial property within the Tree Mountain geographical boundaries, we anticipate there to be about a $15 million adjustment down, meaning that the county assessor's values need to come down by that much. The collection, we look at a collection rate for Tree Mountain, you guys are about 97.5%. We get those two numbers, times it together, we get the 753 million. In that, we know there is $9 million in new growth. So we take that number out because we don't use new growth for the certified tax rate calculation, giving us $744 million is what the taxable value inside of Tree Mountain for tax rate property reasons. Last year, Tree Mountain had just under 1.7 million for their revenue. So it's just a simple math calculation. Take your revenue of last year divided by this year's new values. That gives me your certified tax rate of 0 0.002279. And when we times that by the proposed tax rate value, it gives me $1,700,000 more or less. So that was the amount that Tremont was entitled to take for the 2021 tax year without having to go through a truth and taxation process. Um, so the city council looked at that, looked at some of the needs that maybe the city had, uh, the fire department, staffing levels there, other services that the city council would be aware of. And he came back and decided, you know what? We need to raise taxes. We're needing more revenue into the system. So the state kicks off and says, all right, Sean went into the system after the commission approved it. He puts in a new value. The tax commission says, hey, that's higher than the certified tax rate. You have to go through truth that kicks off the whole advertising requirements, stuff like that. What ends up happening, if you want to skip forward, I can try one more. So this is the ad that everyone has seen. It was in the paper this last Wednesday, uh, explaining, hey, there's public hearing. It's going to happen on the third. This is what, on an average, if you had a $280,000 residence, this is what we did. So then everyone got these little wonderful notices from my office. Um, so I pulled an example, hopefully this person doesn't mind, but it's public knowledge. It's not, there's nothing on here that's confidential. So what ends up happening though, is none of this happens parcel by parcel. The tax rate, so when we looked at the value for Tremont, there was about a 5% increase overall. And so the rate comes down 5% you're only entitled to the same amount of money you got the year before and so if values go up the rate will come down um, i hate to use the word plug but really the rate is a plug number because you have value you have budget 
the rate is just the number of the multiplier to get us to, to your revenue, your budget is revenue from the year before. And so if the values go up, which they have been, the assessor's office has reappraised, values have gone up. And Tremont as a whole, when the entire geographical boundary is about five, six percent. So the rate will also drop that amount. So if you look at this person's property, this year uh, their market value is fifty thousand dollars. Last year their market value is fifty thousand dollars. So it was not changed by the assessor's office this year. So you can go down, you can look and see. All right, last year they paid five hundred. And $90 in taxes. Or not. Kind of bottom, sorry. Right there. Okay. So last year, 2020, they paid $590.10. Let's just focus on Tremont. They paid $120.65 for Tremont. The second line down, you see the 120.65. Mm -hmm. Then we go over to 20. By the way, this form is designed by the State Tax Commission. Not my favorite form in the world. But this is how we have to present it. It is confused. Um, but they're trying to give so much information. I think they, anyway. So 2021, you'll see it says no budget increase in proposed budget amount. So the no budget increase. So if Tremont had just stuck with their TN, with their certified tax rate, which was the 2279, this individual would have paid 113.95. And that's because they're going to pay less because the rate came down. Their value didn't change. So they're, they're kind of the example of what happens when a rate drops. So your value stays the same. So they're going to pay less tax. Uh, what that means is that someone, someone else, somewhere, someone else is paying the additional $7 that this person is now not paying. Tremont's still getting that seven dollars. It's just coming from someone else. Um, then we can look at the proposed budget increase. So then Tremont came back and said, "All right, in order to fund the fire department, other issues, concerns we have, we need to raise our tax rate up to the two five four eight. This person's going to pay the hundred twenty seven forty. So, and then the next column, change of proposed budget is approved." That's just falling in 2021. They never go back and compare it to the 2020 year on this sheet. So when it says 1345, that is 2021 numbers comparison. So the TNT half, if they get the higher rate versus what the certified tax rate was going to give them. So a lot of times we see people see, hey, if their home was hit drastically this year, which is very likely with how the reappraisals have gone in the assessor's office, there's a good chance so someone's home value may have gone up 15%. Well, they're outpacing Tremont's geographical 5%, 6% rate reduction. So they're going to get hit with the higher rate, just even through if they had, if Tremont hadn't changed anything, that person would have had to pay more than but then when the bump came, they're paying the truth in taxation the proposed value, which they're also higher appraised value, if that makes sense, because they were outpacing the, the five, six percent that Tremont had to hold. Um, so, you know, on that appraisal, was it just uh, you look at individual properties? Or was it, it wasn't a factor in creating the appraisal. Uh, I believe Tremont, so last time Tremont was in the actual, so the county assessors, they do it every five years, they do a review of the parcel. Tremont, I asked Rob, 2018 was the last time that Tremont was in the reappraisal area. So this year it would have just been a factor. Um, the assessor's office, they go and they look at, they have different factors they looked at. I've been told I can no longer say they use a magic eight ball. Um, but they do have models that they do. They apply it to primary residences. Um, you know, this much square footage this year was built. There are different factors they can look in their system to apply the actual factoring. But I think, well, I'm not sure exactly what number he used for Tremont. 
for a reappraisal factor of adjusted. I would assume it's probably in that 10 to 15 percent. So what that means is that commercial is not changing from the assessor standpoint. Your commercial values are, are holding steady, the residential values are increasing, so you have a tax shift. It's like in the example I showed, Tremont's still getting that seven dollars from this parcel, it's just coming from somewhere. So uh, this answers the time. Thank you. What I like is see if you look at the 2020 number of $120.65 and through it dropping and then I us adding the 11.8%, it really is only a six percent increase over what they paid last year <clears throat> on this particular person. <clears throat> I think that's key is on this particular person uh, because you know it's different for different people it's different you know and uh, <clears throat> ours for example just went up so I you said that the commercial has just remained constant I mean there once again probably there are some changes in some commercial properties uh, that have been made but from the numbers I see, I don't see a large, large bump. For example, so if I were just to look at like your, the one RDA CDA you guys have at Tremont Center, majority of it is going to be commercial, if not all. Um, its values went up. A little bit, but not much. There wasn't that much there. So, I mean, that kind of tells me the commercials not going up as high of a rate as commercials. I mean, it goes to residential. Tom, so here we, we are asking uh, if we were just following through at a normal rate, we would get one thousand. $1.7 million if we did not go through truth and taxation plus new growth. What What is the plus new growth number? How much more would that add to our bottom line? Yeah, so it's, so it's about $20,000. Okay. And then, um, okay. So really, you guys are asking for about $200,000. Mm -hmm. through the, the tax increase process. Mm -hmm. So Tom, these these notices that went out to everybody here in Tremont then are explaining to everybody in detail what what their taxes are going to be if truth and taxation right. happens. This is the position they're going to be in if it goes through. Correct. Okay. So the city can always lower the proposed rate. Uh, you just can't go over that. So say you had your public hearings and all of a sudden it became out and the citizens agreed, hey, we really need $250,000. You couldn't do that. But if you came out and decided after public hearings and everything else to say, hey, we only really need $150,000, you could adjust your proposed rate down. Does that make sense? So there, every year there's a there's an inflationary number that's put out by someone that says this is how much inflation went up in our area. Yeah. Okay. But if we apply that to our taxes every year, number one, we wouldn't be in this position. I would think, you know, because um, we would be growing at that rate every year. And so you said we can do that, and that's not an uncommon practice. We just need to go through truth, truth and taxation every year. Correct. Okay. Are there other cities in the area that are doing that in the county? Uh, Brigham City has started that. Okay. What's the name of that taxation? The average tax? What, what is it called? Of the what? What do you call that type of taxation where it takes inflation into bear? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a name for it in the actual code. Uh, 
code. Yeah, inflation adjusted <clears throat> revenue, but there's nowhere in the truth and taxation laws in state code that allows you to capture inflation in the certified tax rate process. So they have to come back every year and get truth and taxation, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I know the legislature has looked at that in the past, that some commissioners have argued that hey, we should have a number in there to something and the legislature has been very hesitant and they've said no if, if you want it you need to ask the public that's been their response in previous years um, <clears throat> so you you mentioned the total value of uh you know taxable value of real estate and yeah. property tax in Tremont is <clears throat> what have you do you know what part of that is is uh, industry and what part of it is if we were to do a percentage of do we know what that percentage is yeah we could definitely get that i didn't bring those with me today it mean just in a rough ballpark number um you, would i would i would hate to guess but yes. i can easily pull that i can pull that later today it's in a um, why would that matter, Lyle? Uh, well, because I think that I think what it it's this is is uh, who's paying what? You know, if if uh, depreciation is if industry is paying, you know, they're they're depreciating out their equipment and so forth, and their their property value is declining. Somebody has to pay that additional amount. And so what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to figure out is, is that, is that, uh, how is that balance sort of happening? You know, are we seeing, uh, are we seeing industry depreciate out their personal equipment and therefore um, personal property or residential property about, you know, we're, we're paying more. That's kind of what I'm driving at. So depreciation isn't driven off, it's driven off of a set value, right? I think it's 10 years or something like that on a piece of equipment. Well, and, yeah, and over time, you know, personal right. property is, uh, equipment and so forth is going to be depreciating. So they're going to, it's not going to be as valuable and they're going to pay less. And, and so somebody, somebody has to pay that offset. And that's where I'm, that's where I'm driving at. Why don't you go to, up to that very great detail sheet because it shows the personal property, which I think increased by like five, five to the left. It's that bottom number. So I can have like seven. Okay. So what you're saying then is that probably there is not a, a significant. Uh, didn't change significantly. Yeah, I mean, some percent is still significant. Um, I mean, the one of the many issues that one of the issues, one of the issues that the county faces, I mean, Tremont is no different. Is when you look to the side, you can see well, the, the three property types that go into the total values. You have your real property, which consists of residential, commercial. You have your centrally assessed. That's the stuff that the state tax commission comes in and looks at. It's usually your larger utilities, railroads, power lines, gas lines, that cross over many county boundaries so the state handles their valuation. And then you have personal property. So when you look at the personal property for Tremont, 16% of your tax base is what personal property makes up, which is always concerning because personal property is a depreciating tax base. Uh, you, I mean, the, the value is going to be going down. I mean, there are the years where you know you'll have new companies move in, um, or a large manufacturing line, you know, as autos or multi mill changes things out. Those could impact that line. Uh, but personal property can and does impact how your rates go. So over time, a personal property we haven't got new businesses moving in here and. Personal property depreciates out. 
when the county does their reassessment, that's when values get reassessed so that the revenue income comes in the same amount. Well, the revenue will always stay the same. There's just, you know, your classic pie chart of where each one's coming from. And so it's, you know, there are some cities in the county that they have zero commercial in their areas, or very limited commercial. And so it's, it's pretty significant to them uh, to be appraisal of how that can impact them. So that's the hard part is, you know, because you have residents that, because these things just don't happen in a vacuum, that you have some people who may have actually had, I don't know, 25, 30% reappraisal on their home. It's possible. And so they would be hit pretty hard just from the reappraisal alone. And then you add on any type of proposed tax increase. It could, it could be a significant amount of an individual. And then you have the other side where maybe their value actually went down a little or they stayed the same. The 10%, 11% increase coming from Tremont will actually be less than that when compared to the county this year. If that makes sense. I think what's spurred this meeting on is when these notices were sent out, we we weren't understanding that the truth in taxation was put on here. So we thought, well, if the county's raised enough taxes, you know, do we need to re do the truth and taxation on the Tremont side if they had increased taxes and not really understanding that you are showing us what the truth and taxation is going to be for the school district and for the other, our city and the other two cities, they're getting impacted yeah. with their truth and taxation. Correct. And so that, that's where this meeting came from is these notices not understanding What's going on? What's that? So, do we have any further questions on these notices or for comments? So, from from a whole pie perspective, the count the county, which all the money comes into the county, right? Um, if we have all these values and everything, you receive the same amount every year, right? We get one point seven million. You get whatever four or five million, I don't know what your number is, but as a county, but as a county, the, the whole pie is a certain amount and it stays consistent. Or how do you raise the county's taxes? Same way you need more. Does. You have to go through truth and taxation. Yeah, so we get about $8 million mm -hmm. for the property taxes the county does. So yeah, if we wanted to do more than that, we would have to do the exact same thing. Tremont does, the school district does. Or just be a different timing. So, a different timing. okay, so that piece of the pie is coming from it's the Utah State Tax Commission, not from the county. Which part? The our 1.7 million or whatever. That's distributed by the tax commission. It's money distributed to us. It's, so, yeah, I mean, so like you can see on the, let's see, go forward three slides. One more. Right back right there. Nope. There. Hey, <laughs> so on the left, you can see all of the taxing entities mm -hmm. that are on this parcel. Right. So all of those fun, wonderful entities. We'll just focus on the 2020 because that's what we can see. But scroll down a little bit. So last year. The county received, the county treasurer's office received $590.10. Okay. When this person came in and paid in November, we got $590.10. The county treasurer then disperses that money back out to all the different entities okay. based on what he received. And that usually happens on the following month, the 10th day of the following month. And so if any of these entities wanted to raise their wanted more money than the certified tax rate is allowing them, they have to go through this truth and taxation process. And so you can see like on this parcel, you can have multiple entities on a parcel going through truth and taxation. Like on this parcel, you have the school district and also Tremont that are being impacted. 
Who says the certified cash rate? Is that the state? I do. With the help of the tax commission. I mean, so how the certified tax rate is set, it goes through the county assessor's office. They have to provide all of the values by May 22nd. They have to be into the system, into the state tax commission system. There are questions. We answer questions about, hey, why did this happen? This doesn't look right. So, you know, we verify the data and make sure it's correct. And then after that, it just becomes that all the numbers are in the tax commission system now. So it's really all kind of clicking boxes almost at this point. Because we know Tremont's budget and revenue, and now we know the values for an income algebraic equation of what's my tax rate to get the budget. Okay, so looking at this point forward, then we go through track through from taxation, we get this 11.8, whatever it is, 11.8 mm -hmm. run. Next year, does it go back to the certified tax rate? How does that work? So it goes, so you're entitled. So if that, if your new number goes through and you get the 1.9 million instead of 1.7, you are now entitled to the 1.9 million. Okay. So it doesn't, that's a very good question. It doesn't reset. It doesn't make you go back and so now going forward, your new base budget number becomes that one. So is there I'm just gonna throw this out there. Is there what was the inflation this year? Um 2020 to 2021. When I looked at the so for the county's budget, we look at the May CPI, mm -hmm. the consumer price index. When I looked in May, it was at 5%. But that, that's not Utah, that's not Tremont, that's not Rock Valley, that's US wide. I'm just curious if we were to apply this technique of, a, of doing the inflation growth per year, how many years would it take us in three years from now, would we be where we need to be for this budget for the fire department? And with them asking for this grant money, that could help cover that. So I'm wondering if if we want to consider the idea of instead of going with the 11.8, we go with the inflationary rate and we go with that every year if we wouldn't be able to keep ourselves on task with where we're headed. Did that make sense? So that can that can be done because I, I guess I misunderstood that that hasn't been something that what well, he's for well, what he was saying instead of asking for the full eleven percent we'd ask for the higher and turn around next year turn it back another five percent yeah if we stand with inflation that you know that, because we haven't we haven't done any inflationary increases in 30 years or whatever right we have depended solely on growth right. over the years so it seems to me that if we're following inflation our um budget uh, is going to increase much more rapidly if you will but, but then do we have to do the truth and taxation every year? Every, every year, year we would uh -huh. go through this process. Anytime you exceed that certified tax rate, even if you exceed it by 0.01%, the tax commission will make you go through the truth and taxation. Yeah, I was just going to say what, what we're proposing is almost a new level of service. Um, it's not an inflationary issue. It's we're adding full-time staff to take care of the need uh that we have um so i think that approach is more commonly used just to keep up with inflation that is occurring you know staff you know staffing um our salaries and benefits you know are typically we, we increase those typically by three percent as you know for cola our medical uh insurance increases by like ten percent mm -hmm. you know every year is a good good average number and that's when I think that idea of increasing it by inflation is appropriate, but, but I don't think that would really work here. Um, or at least that's, that's not what was envisioned um, in the 
budget. For the questions. So our coming back to the residential uh, the residences in Tremont, are they? Did, did I understand you right that you know you're looking at different air, different different uh, residences have increased in property value more than others? You know, for example, this one which we're using here, they actually it actually declined a little bit in, in the amount that they're going to pay to Tremont, uh, but some of them have increased, and so what what is the how does all of that sort of how does that play out? Yeah, it all comes back to the, the, the property tax system in Utah is revenue driven. So Tremont is entitled to that $1.7 million. But it's made up, but some people are, it's not a, you know, across yeah, the board. So we thing. look at the Tremont city as a whole, the whole geographic boundary of Tremont, and we look, all right, what is happening inside those boundaries? And so the, for this year, the values went up by about 5%. Five, six percent. So the rate will come down to that corresponding amount. And so in this scenario here, where this person's value did not change, that will show exactly that they will actually pay less in taxes this year. However, that seven dollars that they are not paying Tremont, someone else picked it up because Tremont still gets the 1.7. Um, I mean, Tremont cares who it comes from, but really, they don't care. If Joe Q pays it or Tom Cotter pays it. They want the 1.7 million. I mean, they do care, but for this, you know. We care. Um, <clears throat> questions, Rick? I have a question. Are, was there, are there um, reasons that are not acceptable reasons to raise taxes? Um, I, that was probably left to your. There's nothing in code. Okay. Okay. So. I think a lot of the a lot of the citizens of Tremont are under the impression that the reason we're doing this is because the city's growing, and that's not really true. The reason we're raising taxes is because safety is so important to us, and the issue has risen to the point. Actually, it's been there a long time ago. We just barely arrived to the, we just barely had concluded that we can't go any longer without full time uh, individuals, uh, professionals helping us with our safety. But there's a lot of people in Tremont that don't understand that we've been here for a long time. We just haven't, we just haven't, you know, asked them for dollars. But the truth of the matter is, is that safety is so important in Tremont. And, that we have to go here because it is growing. Yes, it is, but we we already had been to the point that we needed it long before all this growth happened. And with the growth coming, it just it just stimulates more of what of the reason why we're doing it. I just wondered if there was a reason why we couldn't increase taxes. If there was any particular thing, but obviously not. Cap is a cap. Level. They do cap you at a certain level, but you're three months more than you're at. So. <laughs> then one of the other interesting. How long has it been since we actually did this? How long has it been? I think we mentioned it. Wasn't the A2? Was that two? About. It's as far back records as that we had. Property tax commission had, according to Lamar Sayer, he wrote a memo. I don't know if you remember Lamar. He was but he wrote a memo back in the early 2000s, I think when it was discussed at the city council, and that's what his memo said, is essentially went back in the records and couldn't find it. And he went back as far as the, the mid 80s. And there hasn't been an increase in taxes above the certified tax rate that we know of since 1980. Right. In the 80s. Yeah. I think the reason a, a lot of folks are, you know, I mean, it is, we, we say that we haven't, you know, gone through the truth in taxation and we haven't, you know, but, but taxes have increased, you know, and, and sometimes it's starting to get to the point where some, for some, it's 
you know, pitching pretty hard, you know, and, it, and I guess it, maybe, maybe you can kind of explain that to me. You know, our, our taxes have increased, uh, clearly it might have. And, um, and so can you just kind of, because that, those are the questions we get, that, that's what people see is good grief, my, my taxes have increased, you know, and um, just, just explain that to me, how, you know, how over time things have gone up, the taxes have gone up. Yeah, and so I mean, a lot of it is that it comes off of that, where they, they is revenue driven. So when that new growth comes in, so say, so like one year for the county, you know, we're around that six, seven million dollars in property taxes. When the Ruby pipeline came through for the county, that was a one million dollars in new growth that came into the county. So now when we fast forward a year forward, where I used to be entitled to that six million dollars number, I'm now entitled to the seven million dollars. And if if Ruby Pipeline's value goes down, or if someone else's value goes down through reappraisal or other things, that number will get made up somewhere else. So that's where one of the issues the county has as a whole, because a larger percent of our tax base is that personal property, which is a depreciated tax base. So if that tax base goes down, there's going to be a shift. So so the the Ruby Pipeline is going to depreciate their pipeline drastically. And so, I mean, that's countywide, that's one of the issues you look at. And I mean, the other issues that occur in this, luckily, I mean, I look at it, if values were to go down, so say your house went from $250,000 down to $200,000, Tremont and the county are still entitled to the same amount they got last year. So your tax rate will go up. Even if your value went down, your tax rate goes up, so you'll pay. You know, a higher amount. All things being equal, but Mr. Sean, can we pull up that spreadsheet? It's in the spreadsheet to the red that essentially showed um, it essentially kind of showed historically what's been happening to to, uh, to Tremont City. Maybe just focus on the last two columns. But, you know, the question's always been, are we getting the same amount of growth or same amount of revenue? And this spreadsheet really tries to capture that issue of uh, showing that essentially from one given year to the other, and that's where you see the green boxes. And I don't think I need to spend a little more time talking through it. Why don't you, why don't you scroll back to the very beginning? So essentially it shows from uh, 2021 to 2019, um, those tax years, and it shows the reappraisal that's occurred um, during that time and the values that's been changed. Um, and then if you go to column F there, you'll see essentially the amount of value and new growth. Um, and then you see the certified tax rate. And you can see it will change um, and adjust up or down. But if you would go to the interviews, uh, so then you can see the total revenue that we received. So in 2019, you know, we received essentially $6.43 million. Um, we had $81,000 in new growth. Um, and so essentially that base, you know, was, was clearly seen in, uh, in the following year. Um, and so I subtracted out new growth you know, just to make sure that those numbers were approximately the same and, and they were. Um, so we are we are seeing what the county's saying we should see essentially. And you, you know, so I thought it was an interesting exercise. So why so much new growth on line 24, 81,000 and only 20,000 this year? Well, 20,000, so just remember that the tax liens start January first. So it just really depends. I mean, we've issued a lot of building permits in any given year. This tax year, it's we've issued, you know, you would think 350 building permits, but that's those 
permits weren't in process, weren't constructed as of January 1st. Mm -hmm. So I expect that we'll see a new, a bigger growth or bump next year. And it really depends, like, for example, Wasatch Development and how much they actually construct, um, you know, by the time January 1st comes, you know, because 234 permits were, were associated with that one development. So. Well, I, I think you brought up a good point. I mean, let's say we do a lot of growth and we end up with $200,000 in money from new growth. The mindset needs to be that we need that money to support current services because of our growth. And this is a new service line that we're adding. So uh, I need to think about it that way. Yeah. And we talked about essentially, uh, and we just haven't gotten there. You know, Brett, was your suggestion is a good one. We need to do it. We need to look into the future and say, you know, for example, and we talked about it in general terms with officers. When we grow, you know, our population by a thousand, two thousand, you know, how many, how many FTEs do we need and new officers to provide support? Um, so that, you know, to Tom's point when he mentioned, you know, when you get new growth and new revenues, you're you're expected to provide services to those new residents, and that comes out of cost, obviously. And that should come out of this new grant property taxes. Okay. So the new growth is actually that would help us as insurance rates go up for and salaries and everything else. If we go with the inflationary, that would help there as far as help cover those costs that are going up. It can in the short term. It really depends, you know, like I said, this depends on can we keep pace and hiring officers, you know what? Oh, what sure. You know, yeah. So it can certainly maybe help to pray that uh, cost, but there's also other variables. Oh, sure. And, Any further questions? No, thank you. Very important. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Anything yeah. else for us? Oh. No, it's, uh, I'm glad you guys have had questions that you want to be informed and find out the details. Uh, I think that speaks well. Um, I used to really like Sean a lot, and I thought I wanted to be what you sure. We need a motion. I'll make a motion that we um, adjourn. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Well, I was going to say, so I'm going adjourn. So the county does have uh, help for those individuals that are on fixed income. Uh, there are program tax abatements available for different programs that run through my office. So if you are the people who are having a hard time, please, please, please refer them to my office. We can help. There are a couple programs available to them to help you get them qualified for. So. Thank you. That is definitely a concern. Thank okay. you.